In this video, we will try to answer the following question. How many real roots does the polynomial below have, where the polynomial is given by x to the fifth minus 9x cubed plus 14? Before we dive into the solution of this problem, let's try to talk about a few points of interest. First of all, we observe that the degree of this polynomial is relatively high. It is greater than or equals to 5. In fact, in the early 19th century, it has been proved that the polynomial equations of degree above four do not have an algebraic formula to express the solutions. On the other hand, it's not quite practical to solve this problem by hand with a numerical method. Therefore, we the better look for a way that could get around this difficulty. Secondly, it does not seem to have any obvious factorization that we could apply, so we do not anticipate to obtain any nice and neat solution like an integer followed from some factorization of the polynomial into a product of linear polynomials as what we usually do in a simpler problem. However, all it asks for is just the number of the real roots, not the accurate value of the roots. Therefore, we may not even need to solve this equation to answer this question. Here is the suggestion. We will exploit the properties of this polynomial function, such as continuity, monotonicity, etc to try to answer the question. Also, we're going to use the derivatives to detect the properties, such as the monotonicity of this function. Let's explore the big ideas involved in this question. And we're going to use the figure over here, which is the graph of a typical polynomial function to illustrate our ideas. First of all, let's recall that a value, an x value, is a root of a polynomial if and only if the value of this polynomial at this x is equal to zero. Graphically speaking, it's simply going to be the place at which the graph of the function intersect with the x-axis. For instance, in this figure down there, we have a few roots. The first root is over here, and the second root is here with the third and fourth root at those two places, respectively. So whenever you have the graph intersecting with the x-axis, you have a root of the polynomial function. Secondly, let's try to categorize the roots in accordance to its relation with the x-axis. For instance, at the first, third, and fourth root, we observe that the graph of this function is in fact crossing the x-axis. However, at the second root down there, the graph of the function is not crossing the x-axis, but just touching the x-axis. In terms of the calculus point of view, this second root is in fact a place at which you have a critical point. Therefore, we can summarize our observation into the following conclusions. A point is a root if it's either a critical point, critical point, or it's a point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. Finally, let's look at the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. We observe that in this situation, the monotonicity of the function does not change, at least at that point crossing point. So, for instance, in this part, the function would keep increasing. And at this part, 
the function would keep decreasing, at least in a neighborhood. Lastly, at this point at which the graph crosses the x-axis, the function become increasing again. On the other hand, recall from what we have learned in calculus, the monotonicity of the function does not change in between two adjacent critical points. For instance, we have a critical point at this couple places, as we have denoted on the graph. And we observe that at those couple places, the function would remain either increasing until it gets to a critical point, and the monotonicity may or may not get changed after the critical point. It depends on the specific function, but what we could conclude is that the monotonicity would not get changed in between any two adjacent critical points. They would have to be remaining the same, the same monotonicity until they hit a critical point. So we could summarize this observation in the following statement. The monotonicity doesn't change in between two adjacent critical points. With these observations at hand, let's get started figuring out an answer for our question. Since we have decided that the critical points of this polynomial would be serving as the anchor in our searching of the root, our first task is to compute all critical points of this polynomial. Hence, step one, finding the critical point To find the critical point, we know that this is clearly a differentiable function. Hence, the only type of the critical point is the point at which we have a zero derivative. So we would love to compute the derivative of this polynomial first, which is five times x to the fourth, subtract 27 x squared. And we could easily factorize an x squared from this expression and end up with this product of two polynomials. And if we want this polynomial to be zero, then we could easily solve the real critical point for this polynomial as zero and radical 27 over 5 and negative radical 27 over 5. For the sake of convenience in our subsequent computation, we would love to use the numerical expressions of those two uh, numbers. And by punching this expression, into your calculator, you would have 2.32 and negative 2.32 as your numerical expressions. Once we get those critical points, we could start determining the monotonicity of this function at various interval separated by the critical point. So step two is to determine the monotonicity. To do this, we would break the real line, the x-axis, into a couple parts according to the distribution of the critical point. Hence, we roughly mark the critical point on this real line with the middle points given by zero, your first critical point, and the points towards the left is the negative 2.32, and your critical point on the right, it's gonna be positive 2.32. Now, once we have this breakdown of the x-axis, we could look at 
our expression of the derivative, which is up here, to determine the positiveness of the derivative, which would lead to our determination of the monotonicity of the function. In particular, from the structure of this expression, we know that x squared is always a positive number. Therefore, the positiveness of this expression would only rely on the second term over here. Hence, when you're looking at the region at which your x is less than negative 2.32, your expression 5x squared minus 27 is going to be a positive number. Hence, we determine that the derivative at this region is positive. On the other hand, for any points in between negative 2.32 and 0, we have the second term being a negative number, as well as for any points in between 0 and 2.32. Therefore, we observe that for both of those two intervals, we would have the derivative being negative. Lastly, once you get beyond the 2.32, both of those two terms would be positive. Hence, we would have positive derivative from 2.32 all the way to positive infinity. Therefore, from the relation between the first derivative and the monotonicity of the function, we conclude that from negative infinity to negative 2.32, we have the function being increasing. And in between negative 2.32 to positive 2.32, the function is decreasing. And lastly, from 2.32 to the positive infinity, the function is increasing again. Lastly, with the critical points and the monotonicity of the function at hand, we could start looking for the root by determining whether the graph of the function crosses the x-axis or just touches the x-axis. Firstly, let's recall that the function is given by x to the fifth minus 9x cubed plus 14. And we would love to study the value of this function, or at least the tendency of the value of this function, all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. But we're going to break in the real line into a couple intervals according to the critical point. Therefore, the first observation that we make is when the variable x approaches the negative infinity, the value of this function is negative infinity. On the other hand, the value of the function at the first critical point, which is negative 2.32, is roughly speaking equals to 59 point one seven. You could get this value by punching the number into a calculator. Hence, we observe that the graph of this function would climb all the way from negative infinity up to a positive number, which is given by this 59.17. Uh, so we determine that in this region, you will have the function being increasing, so the graph of the function is keep like climbing up. And at some place, it would be crossing the x-axis. Hence, we have like one root in between negative infinity up to the first critical points, negative 2.32. Now let's keep moving forward. The second critical point is zero, and we observe that in this region, in this interval, the function is going to be decreasing. So the graph is going to be descending. On the other hand, the value of the function at zero could easily be seen to be 14, which is still a positive number. 
Hence, we determine that there is no crossing of the x-axis in between these two points, since both of those two numbers are given by positive, positive number. So you do not descend in love distance to cross the x-axis. However, if we keep moving forward and up to the third critical point, you will have the value of this function approximately equal to negative three point, I'm sorry, negative 31.17, which could be obtained by using a calculator. So, so in, in between zero and 2.32, the value of the function would be descending from a positive number to a negative number. Hence, at some place between 0 and 2.32, you must have the graph of the function crossing the x-axis. And lastly, the limit of this function as x approaching positive infinity is positive infinity. Hence, we observe that from 2.32 to positive infinity, the value of the function would climb up from a negative number to some positive, positive number again. So we conclude that the graph of the function would be crossing the x-axis at some point between 2.32 and positive infinity. With this computation, we observe that the graph of the function would be crossing the x-axis three times. And each crossing is corresponding with a real root of this polynomial. Hence, we conclude that the number of real root for this polynomial is three. At last, let's look at the graph of this function generated by a graphing utility. And we see that the graph of this function match up with our analysis of the property of this function. For instance, it has three critical point over here, here, and there. On the other hand, we also observe that the graph of the function would cross the x-axis at three places, matching up with our prediction of the property of this function. Thank you for watching. See you next time.